following is a copyrighted presentation of the Southwest Athletic Conference in conjunction with Raycom. After last Saturday, the Southwest Conference should be giving itself a big hand. The Baylor Bears burst into the national spotlight, going on the road and upsetting a strong Colorado team. While Texas A&M received equal billing after unleashing its stable of blue chippers on LSU. The Aggies have a young quarterback with the innate sense of a seasoned veteran. And a record-setting running back whose time has apparently arrived. Today, Texas A&M hopes for more good news against the Tulsa Golden Hurricane. where today the number 15 Aggies of Texas A&M look to stay unbeaten against the Golden Hurricane of Tulsa University. Dave Barnett, along with former NFL All-Pro defensive lineman Dave Rowe, 24 freshmen on display in A&M's demolition job, 45-7 over LSU last week. But of those 24, three stood out on offense. Well, they really did. It was interesting. Last week, R.C. Slocum played in his locker room, lean on me. I don't think he ever envisioned that he would be leaning on three freshmen in Granger, Hill, and Gross. Fish, as they call them there, but what an impact they had. Gross, first catch was a touchdown. Hill, 212 yards rushing and of course Granger his first time five times he led the team to scores now those were the three that stood out on offense only three senior starters on defense and although he's not a freshman Patrick Bates was the standout well he also didn't play like a freshman two interceptions of course but more impressive to me is his size six foot four 224 pounds he is a big hitter back there for one game at least he took some of the spotlight away from Kevin Smith when he intercepts a pass this year he'll set the new Southwest Conference career interception lead and he talked about what that's going to mean to him. Well, it would mean a lot, I mean, but looking at the conference and um, the um, emergence of the past, I mean, with the Houston and TCU and the Rice, I mean, guys like Tracy Soule from Texas Tech and all those other guys, I mean, they're right behind me. They're only five or six interceptions behind me, so um, hopefully I can get that interception. It'll mean a lot, I mean, but um, with the way that they're passing, now, it probably wouldn't last but about a year or two. So I'm hoping I can get seven, eight interceptions and make the record last at least for five years. Well, a little bit different challenge than LSU last week because Tulsa has a dangerous passer at quarterback in T.J. Rubley. Well, Rubley is an interesting person because he really hasn't gotten into rhythm with his receivers. If he does, watch out. I know that's a big concern for Texas A&M. He's thrown for almost 8,000 yards. They look for balance on offense. They are 2-1 and one after a disappointing loss at the hands of Kansas last week. And Prime Network's Southwest Conference Game of the Week is brought to you by Sports Cream. When muscles hurt, rub in Sports Cream for fast pain relief. We'll be back with the opening kickoff right after this. Great football weather today. Of course, this part of the country getting an early rush of fall, so the temperatures in the 50s, 60s, it might hit 70 today. And uh, overcast and breezy with maybe a slight possibility of a sprinkle in Tulsa. R.C. Slocum and the Aggies, 1-0 after a 45-7 win over LSU. And our Southwest Airlines team musts for the Aggies this week. Well, first of all, Dave, it's very easy to get complacent after a great game like they had last week. I know A&M coaches have worked hard telling their players, forget about last week. 
With Bucky Richardson, you had an option attack. With Granger, it's more of a power running and drop back passing attack. And of course, GHT, Greg Hill time. Can the sequel be anything like the premiere last week? 212 yards rushing. 57 yards, and it was mostly on sweep, so they have got to stop the attack at the corners. Tulsa won the toss, they want the ball. Number seven is Dunstan Anderson. And number 21 is Chris Uly. Terry Venetulius will put this one through the end zone, and the Hurricane will start first and 10 at their own 20. And Theron Joseph Rubley, no wonder he's TJ. 48 of 80 this year, five touchdowns, two interceptions, a medical redshirt last year. Tore up a knee against Arkansas, so he thought last year would be his senior year, but he's back in 91. He is the all-time leading passer in Tulsa history, and that's saying something. Hurricane out of the one-back set. Hewley for the injured Ron Jackson. As Rudley audibilizes on first down. And on play action, he'll keep it. For about six, and already they're better than LSU last week. <laughs> That almost looked like a broken play when he came down the line. There was no one to pitch to. Here's the NCNB starting offensive lineup for Tulsa. Yuli, as we said, the tailback. Bill Beener is the age back, mainly a blocker. Fallon Way Casey gets most of the action receiving-wise. He's the big 6'8 tight end. Thompson, a possession receiver. Fair is the speed man. And up front, Ostrowski leads a pretty good offensive line, but they have a major challenge today. This time it is Hewley, and he finds a hole in the first down up near the 35-yard line, but did he lose the ball? Aggies say he did, and they've got it. When Hewley came through the line, he came through clean, Dave, and he started to break back to his weak side, and it looked like someone just got a hand in and just pulled it off. Now watch this, back to his weak side, and see if somebody just doesn't get a hand in there. He's on the left of your screen, right there. No, actually, he just looked as if he may have been switching hands. Lance Tackleman. It appeared was the Aggie falling on the ball and an early break for a &F. Jeff Granger, the redshirt freshman who led scoring drives the first five times he was at the helm last week. Here's Greg Hill inside the 20 and a first down right off the bat. James Blake, the strong safety, brought him down after a gain of 15. Granger is 6'4", 193. We told you last week a baseball standout. And he showed uh, more than a few football abilities as well. Audibilizing on his first collegiate pass, he went for 41 yards on that toss. Hill, as we said, 212 yards, the NCAA freshman debut record. Gross for Carter at fullback and up front, Dowson leads an outstanding offensive line, better than anyone expected in their opener. Why not try Hill again? Another gaping hole, and he is near the 10. This is right where they picked up from last week. The Tulsa defense, Scroggins the bandit, he may line up anywhere, including at nose guard where Bratcher is the starter. The linebackers led by Michael White out of Dallas Pinkston. And the secondary with Stephen Ford, their best cover man. And if uh, Hickey is anything like Anthony Marshall for LSU last week, he may lead him in tackles. They and him running back spent all day in the secondary last week. Powering for two or three is Cliff Gross, the true freshman fullback from AM Consolidated. Dave, I don't believe that the Hurricanes felt they could compete up front with the A&M. They have to use those stunts. They've got to shoot in those lines and get penetration into the backfield to stop this A&M attack. And what did Dave Rader tell us yesterday? We need something good to happen early. Well, something good did not happen early. Plan B, <laughs> right off the start for him. Aggies take the fumble. First and goal, nine-yard line. Look how deep Hill is behind Granger. Plenty of time to pick the hole. It's there between right guard and tackle, and he picks up four to the five-yard line. Well, Keith Alex, he just he's out there just searching for someone. Number 67, he just drives off the line. Now watch, he's going to come off the line, 
He's going to have to pick up a backer. Now watch, right there. Boom, he nails him. Now he's out of the play. That's White, the middle linebacker, and it was Minter from the weak side. 24 on the tackle. And it is second and goal. Out of the eye this time, another deep pitch to Hill, and another cutback reach to the two. He might have started that jump a little early. He was not going to reach the goal line from where he took off. And Michael White, 44, the man that brought him down. We're pleased to welcome those of you joining us on Prime Network and its nationwide family of regional sports cable networks. As we get our first check today, the Dr. Pepper scoreboard, and that's a big one. Before about 95,000 or so in Knoxville, they're 3-3 early. We've got 11 and a half minutes in the first quarter here as the Aggies look at third and goal. And Granger still has it. Touchdown to the tight end, James McKeon. Dave, what really held that play was a great fake into the line by Granger. I even looked when the back went through. I picked up, tried to pick up the back going through. I thought he had the ball. You and 11 defenders. Absolutely. And McKeon, who is listed as the third team tight end, has both tight end receptions this year. That one for his first collegiate touchdown as Venetulius adds the extra point. Well, let, let it, let's let everyone see that fake again. Granger fakes into the line. Now watch how the defenders just draw on him. I was drawn too, right? There's the fake. Now he just pulls the ball out and just puts it. Almost fall, it falls into him. Pulls the ball out. Look, everyone looking back. And there's McKeon out in the flat. Wide open. So the Aggies take the fumble in for seven with 11-18 in the first quarter here in Tulsa. Aggies still haven't trailed in 1991. Seven to nothing. And uh, R.C. Slocum said there's no way it's going to be as easy this week as it was last week. So far, happily for him, he's wrong. Hewley from the three. Has that alley up the right side into AM territory. And finally caught at the 40. The eight yard return. Well, this is what Dave Rader meant when he said we have to have good things happen. Watch the seam open up. Right there is a miss. And now he picks up a couple blockers. Breaks one tackle on his own on the tail end of this, but great field position on the 40 yard line. Marlon Haynes and Mike Hendricks for the Aggies who prevented a possible touchdown. And Rubley still with Hewley behind him in the one-back set from the 40. With play action, we've seen this before today. And it's worked well both times they've tried it. Kevin Smith with the tackle on Rubley. The AM defensive front with Wheeler instead of Pat Henry at nose guard. But after this series, we'll see the entire second team defensive line. Quentin Coriat, they expect to be as good a linebacker as there is in the nation this year. And in the secondary, Bates, after one game, leads the nation with two interceptions. Rubley got 13 on first down, so first and 10 again. Phil Natowski, the second tight end in motion. They give it to Hewley. He's inside the 25. Dragged down there by the right defensive end, Eric England. Sophomore from Sugarland Willow Ridge. Now, this is what Raider wanted and what Slocum kind of feared. You know, how do these guys react when they're looking at a little bit of a changeup offensively? Well, it's a, big, it's a big plus for Tulsa to be able to come out, have a touchdown scored on them right away and not get deflated. Jackson's had huge numbers, the usual starter. Julie, not bad. And again, Rubley the Aggies react well this time. 
Coming up was Marcus Buckley from outside linebacker. So the third quarterback keeper in the first time they've held him to uh, less than 10 yards. Well, you make adjustments as you play as a defense. You make adjustments when that quarterback comes rolling out there. I think they've now made those, and they're going to stop that quarterback keeper on that end sweep. At the conclusion of today's game, Dave and I will announce the Southwest Airlines player of the game. Keep that in mind along with us. Big play for the Hurricane, third and six, and Rubin still with it. Incomplete as he threw behind Chris Penn, the split end. That's been a continual problem this year. The only consistent pass catchers they've had have been Way Casey at tight end and Brian Thompson, who starts ahead of Penn at split end. See, and you can see Dave Rader there telling him, you've got to pull up, look downfield, and find those wideouts. Get yourself under control a little bit more. Well, they will go for the three. Thompson is the holder. And this will be right at 40 yards. Then this year, three for four. His only miss was from 30. This one is good. Lang hits a 40-yarder into the wind. And we return after this from Southwest Airlines. Well, a few years ago, Will Rogers High School featured as its star, Dave Rader. And less than a mile away here at Skelly Stadium, Raiders Hurricane on the board against the Aggies and trailing seven to three. Lang again to hang it up as high as he can into that wind. And this is Rodney Thomas from the 17, right up the middle. And across the 40. 25 yard return by the true freshman from Groveton after a four play, two minute, 11 second Tulsa scoring drive. And it was, uh, it was really imperative that they get something out of that drive. Absolutely. To get a great return like that and not get any points, it just deflates your offense. Aggieson, Harrison, and Mitchell both wide right. Hill and Gross in the eye behind Granger. And Hill stretching forward for about three. Barry Minter made the tackle. If you're wondering about Granger getting the start, it's because Bucky Richardson very early last week had an arch injury and uh, is out. Doug Carter with an ankle injury last week is out. Kevin Tucker on the defensive line with a shoulder problem out. And Keith McAfee listed as questionable. He is the senior running back out of Willow Ridge High School who's been bothered for several weeks now with a hamstring. Ranger rolls second and eight. And it's through. Inside the 40, first down, a and Preacher passes to Gil Gross, number 31. Dave, when you think fullback size at 5'11", 220, 225, you don't think about soft hands. But Gross, when he turns around, he's got very soft hands. Looks the ball in nice, picks up big yardage. 20 yards on that pass. The first down There's the fake. Watch Gross. He's going to be out in the flat here. Nice, soft hands to reach out, catch it away from your body, look it in, put it down, and pick up yardage. First college catch uh, one week ago went for a touchdown, and he and Granger already showing good chemistry. 19 yards on that pickup. Hill stepping his way inside the 30. Boy, you want to talk about a great step. The adjustment that Hill makes on this play, a lot of running backs would just fall over. There's a pile right in the middle where Michael White comes in there. Hill just steps around. Watch Michael White, 44. He's going to make a pile. Gross blocks him. Boom. Now watch the step over top there. Get those feet right back down on the turf. Fast feet, pick up yardage. Hey, a lot of guys would have been tripped by Gross, their own blocking back. Absolutely. He stepped right over him and picked up seven. Already 39 yards for Hill and counting. This one will put him right at 40. White this time fighting off the block to make the tackle. Pretty amazing story. Six-footer, short for a linebacker, 235 pounds. 
and uh, double figures and tackles eight of his last 13 games. That's nothing compared to one game he had in high school for Pinkston and Dallas. This is one game. 34 tackles, four fumble recoveries, two interceptions, and blocked a punt. And probably drove the team bus. That was all. <laughs> that got him into Sports Illustrated's faces in the crowd that week. Third and one carry. Easy first down inside the 25 for Gross. Powering to about the 23. And that's the way you describe a power running back. Power. Watch when he gets hit. It's a good hit. Backer comes up and makes a nice hit. But watch the feet of Gross. Those legs just keep driving. See the feet picking up. Just keep on driving, grounding out that yardage. Nice tackling job by Ford at 175, giving up about 45 pounds to Gross. So he just grabbed him and fell backwards and made sure that he pulled Gross on top of it. A&M with the timeout. Six minutes, eight seconds in the first quarter. 7-3 Aggies here in Tulsa. And I'm looking for a 2-0 start. Tulsa at 2-1. Looking for a big upset. The Aggies as they continue to drive. One thing Tulsa wanted to do with so much youth on offense for A&M is throw some change up, see how they reacted to uh, some things that might confuse them. Do you see any confusion? No, I, I really haven't seen any confusion on the defensive line. They tried a few stunts, but they really have not been successful to stop this A&M offensive line. After the timeout, first and 10. 6.08 in the first quarter. And Hill with the handoff straight up the middle. Nothing fancy. Aggies didn't get very fancy last week. They didn't have to. This one goes for about four to the 20. Well, when you have a running back like Greg Hill, you can just tell your big offensive lineman, just lock him up. I'll find the hole. The guy that really drew the praise from Slocum was Chris Dowson, the sophomore center, replacing an All-American in Mike Arthur. So he couldn't have had a better game for a debut as a starter. Hill ran behind him for three officially, second and seven. This time, the sweep. Hill, look out. Touchdown. What an ability to see the hole. Just to see it as it materializes and just slash through it. Last week, almost 100 yards at halftime. This week, maybe 100 yards in the first quarter for Greg Hill. And out of Brian Payne's hole, Venetulius makes it 14 to three. They have a couple things on this play that happen. First of all, when you continually run up inside, you start tightening down. Everybody starts to tighten down. Now you pitch it wide. Watch when he sees that slash. Right there, he sees the hole. That's the point I'm trying to make. He just kind of slides through it, slashes through it, and picks up the yardage. There were two potential tacklers there, and he stepped right between them like they were there. Joe Dan McAdams, a linebacker. Phil Holmes, a defensive tackle. If they had closed, would have held him to a gain of two or three. And they, they never got a hand on it. That's called explosion into the hole. When you get to the hole, you just explode no. through it. Great vision. Sees the holes, which is half the battle. A lot of guys uh, kind of get tunnel vision, and they don't necessarily zero in on where the running room is. That's obviously not a problem Greg Hill suffers from. Well, it's a gift that uh, not many people have, and that is to see the hole as it starts to develop, to almost picture it before it opens. And the wind picking up a little bit. It was just a light breeze a few moments ago. Now strong enough as Hewley and Anderson await the Natulius's kick, strong enough that he may have to uh, use the holder here. No hurricane warning exactly, but it is a factor. This one he didn't get. And the Hurricane barely get at the 11. 
Good job falling on it for Tulsa. Lamont Head prevented a disaster. That drive covering less than four minutes. Seven plays and Hill from 21 yards out to make it 14 to three. Hill already nine carries, 65 yards. And that's a surprise, although early. Comes in after a week off. Tulsa, unlike their last possession, with terrible field position, they go from their 11. Thompson left, fair right, they go to Hewlett. Out of the tackle, spin move to the 19. Chris Crooms from strong safety with the tackle. Let's pause 10 seconds for station identification. Kelly Stadium in Tulsa, they expected about 30,000 or so. Dave Barnett and Dave Rowe, 4.45 in the first quarter, already 14-3, Texas A&M. That hole closing immediately, Mark Wheeler from nose guard. Got all 270 pounds on Chris Uli. Going for a second, it looked like a large hole. Looked like perhaps A&M had overplayed it, but they closed so quickly. Wheeler getting the start ahead of Pat Henry this week. And we ask, is that an elbow uh, recurrence for Henry? He had a medical red shirt last year because of a dislocation and a subsequent surgery. They said, nope, Wheeler's just playing that well. New quarterback. They have Cole Rubley. We have no in information about an injury. Mark Matheson, Jr. from here in Tulsa. Out of the wishbone on third and one. Marlowe Fair, the wishbone halfback, moving over from wide receiver. It appears to have the first down. This is what Raider had said to us yesterday, that when they run that wishbone offense, they bring in a, a quarterback just for that short yardage play. And right back in Rubley, as we expected. So they obviously don't worry about telegraphing that. They say, we can execute it well enough that we can get a yard if we need it. Virtually no rushing game for LSU. And Hewley straight ahead for a couple. Jason Atkinson, Eric England on the tackle. This might surprise you. Tulsa is the bigger team. I know. When you look at the meat on the hoof there, you see Tulsa on the right. They outweigh in, in most departments. Well, every, just everyone except the defensive backs. Rubley, great student of the game. Drop back passer, but he expands on his native abilities by studying. He spends a lot of time in the film room with the coaches. Good at audibleizing. One on one here, fair right through his hands. Would have had the first down, and they are frankly very dissatisfied with what they've gotten from some junior college transfers this year. They need speed. Dan Bitson is an injury story we'll get into. Would have been an All-American. Had a tremendous comeback from a car accident a couple of years ago, and the people they brought in, Fair and Harvey Crowder, just haven't done it this year. They certainly have not. Fair, you see one of the junior college transfers in, and that was a pass he should have had. There's no excuse for that. Really puts Rubley in a hole now, third and eight, and they have all three wideouts right as Hewley goes motion left. Rubley escapes and will keep but not get the first down. Credit Quentin Coriot for closing because it looked for a long time as if Rubley would get there. And Coriot with his great quickness got there and closed him off about two yards short. Well, Coriot gets off the ball so quick. Here he is on his coverage. Now watch. Boom. Back inside. Now he's going to come back and force the quarterback out. Now he sees the quarterback start to run. Boom, pull him up short. If I saw Quentin Corriott coming there, I'd step out of bounds, too. Gus Frerat, backup quarterback, does the punting. He had their biggest play all week last week against Kansas. He kept on a fake, took it 24 yards. Big rush, got it off. Not a bad kick. And the Aggies will take over at their 35-yard line. 34 yards under pressure on the punt by... 
Gus Frerach. Well, around the Southwest Conference this week, some of the uh, headlines, Frank Broyles, not in the best of health, the Arkansas longtime athletic director, not traveling at this point in the season, and they have a new voice in the radio booth. Barry Switzer doing the radio color. Bill Menethy announcing his retirement. A Grant Taft says, unless I can keep my coaching job and be AD, I'm not a candidate, and they'd have to change the job description to allow that. He'll probably just stay as head coach. Greg Hill goes for three or four. We get down to the 220 mark of the first quarter. 14-3 Aggies. And that for Greg Hill is, uh, is rapidly becoming the expected, not the superlative. Well, I remember last week he said 100 yards would make me happy and the game would be satisfying to me. And he had 100 yards at halftime. Still has it. Looking long. He's got a man. Brian Mitchell all alone. Touchdown, Aggies. I want to tell you, that was the best fake I've seen by a quarterback in a long while. They, they need to check some IDs down there. A freshman? <laughs> oh, boy. Amazing by Jeff Granger to hold the ball behind the back, show the patience, and then unload a perfect 61-yard touchdown pass, and it is 21-3. to three. When you fake into the line, that'll hold your linebackers, but he just takes the ball and puts it on his hip, and he looks so nonchalant. He doesn't even look like he's involved in the play. Watch this. Fake into the line. Now watch how relaxed he looks. Oh, I just got the ball back here. Just kind of skip. Now I see my man open. Bam. There he is. Hold. Look how nonchalant he is. And there it is. That's as hard and as far as he can throw it. He almost dropped the pass, though. Watch this. Bobbled it a little bit. He was so wide open. Mitchell, a good 10 yards ahead of the best coverage man they have in their secondary, Stephen Ford. That fake is easier to carry out by a left-handed quarterback. Hey, you just stick the ball behind your back, just kind of wave your right hand out there. They normally look up there, and naturally they would see no ball, think the ball is into the line in a running play. Wow. Well, now, Bucky, <laughs> this, was, this was supposed to be the Bucky Richardson victory tour. You know, he had the position all to himself, not sharing it with Lance Pavlis as he did last year. This was supposed to be another heavily ground-oriented A&M attack, and Slocum said we'll be different next year. Next year will be much more of a passing team. Yeah, next year, he said, we'll be under Jeff Granger. I don't, I don't tell you, but the first thing that comes to my mind is Jeff Granger this good. He's had nothing go wrong in the two games he's played. Well, Venatuli is getting a break, and James Blend with this deep kick to the goal line. This is Dunstan Anderson. And the young sophomore from O.D. Wyatt in Fort Worth returns up near the 20-yard line. The latest A&M scoring drive, only two plays. And I've got to say, in answer to your question, is he this good? We have such a small sample to go on. We've got not even four full quarters of football but going on that sample yes he's this good he may be one of those special people that come along very seldom three wide outs right still on the ground Hewley. three yard keeper sam adams the true freshman from cypress creek and among the top recruits in the nation Made the tackle for the Aggies already 159 total yards. We have a minute 20 in the first quarter. And when Granger came in last week, I thought to myself, well, he didn't have time to get nervous. He was just sitting in on the sideline. They said, get in there and play. He really didn't have time to think about it. I thought he'd think about it this week and be more nervous. That doesn't prove out. Two tight ends, straight drop. And they've seen enough of that here, and he starts to hear some boos. Well, I'd boo, too. 
I'd boo and I'd get probably bring in number nine. Crowder, his backup. You cannot win a football game when you drop passes. This is a perfectly thrown ball. Look, right on the hands. He just doesn't look it in. That's two in a row. I got a, if I'm a Dave Rader, I've got a backup saying, hey, give me a chance, coach. Well, out he goes. Chris Penn into the game along with Brian Thompson as they go wide left. Rolanda Reese wide right. That's where Rubley delivers. And it'll be fourth down. Well, you hear the boos. Everybody wanted pass interference by Kevin Smith. But Kevin Smith is a story in himself at defensive corner. He is the best there is around. He says that he can figure out about 60 to 70 percent of the time where the pattern's going, what type of pattern he's going to run. He was just in great position to deflect that ball. So 45 seconds, and on fourth and seven, Farratt will give the Aggies great field position. Wilbur Biggins, who mishandled five kicks as the punt and kick returner last week, but Slocum says, I don't want to burn his confidence. I'm throwing him back in this week. Very short, and Biggins hasn't come close to handling a kick yet. That's only 29 yards into the win. In that de debut against the LSU uh, Tigers last week, among the first, Biggins is a true freshman, handled the first kick for 33 yards. Matthews' first catch goes for 41 on that audible by Granger. Rodney Thomas on the swinging gate play took that one 38 yards, and Sam Adams got his first collegiate sack. He's had a tackle already today. New backfield, Rodney Thomas and Randy Simmons. And it's Simmons at the tailback spot. Buried after a gain of maybe one, and that might be the final play of the first quarter. Simmons at 6'2", 225, senior from McKinney. He's another guy who really expected to inherit full-time duty as the replacement for Darren Lewis. And uh, at this point, he is definitely playing second bill to Greg Hill. Anybody be playing second bill to Greg Hill with his yardage per carry, the elusiveness, the shiftiness on his feet. They won't get the snap off. That is the end of the first quarter. And we expected it to be tighter than it was last week. So much for expectations. After one, 21 to three, Texas A&M. It's not going to get any easier for Dave Rader. They've got Miami in here next week for homecoming. They trail 21 to three after the first quarter. 158 total yards for a &M. Granger perfect on his passing three of three. I tell you the number that jumps out is zero passing yards for T.J. Rubley. That, that's the all-time career passing leader at Tulsa, which has produced people like Jerry Rome. That's incredible. He was victimized by two drops by Fair. And the second quarter opens at midfield on second and nine for Granger. He's still got it. Another well-carried-out fake all day to throw and drop in and out of the hands of Tony Harrison. Pass slightly low and behind him. A great time. He has to sit back in his pocket. He had a lot of time to pick up that wide out coming all the way across the field. At first, I thought he was going to go long, and then he picked up the short man but virtually no pressure on him. Clemson back to a tie with Temple. And third and nine. Still no pressure on Granger on the roll. He bounces one in. Harrison again, the intended receiver. That's about the first wrong thing we've seen Jeff Granger do in two days of football. Also looking for something to cheer about. They're cheering about they're going to get the football. It's the first time their defense has really stopped them. And on fourth down, David Davis, who this week after walking on from uh, Loop, Texas, finally was awarded a scholarship, and here's why. 43 yards per kick against LSU. 
Chris Penn standing at his own 10 yard line as Davis is victimized by that wind the way Gus Peralta has been in a hurricane bounce up to the 37 yard line. That kick goes only 17 yards for Davis. Now important for Rubley not to try and get all 18 points of the deficit back on this drive. And as a senior he should know that. Well he certainly should. You look at his stats compared to where the other ones Jerry Rome that's Jeb Blunt. He's far ahead of Jerry Rome. Remember that 63 to 65. What a combination they had. He and Howard Quilly. Now with the wind at his back it should really help him. But he has to have his receivers catch the football. Well this is not a good sign. Brian Thompson tripped as he went out to take his spot at the bottom of your screen wide right. And Marlo Fair is out. Replaced by Harvey Crowder and Rubley does not like what he sees. Not a good sign in the first play of the possession. 14-36 in the first half at Skelly Stadium in Tulsa. Dave Raiders Golden Hurricane being blown away here with 14-36 in the first half. And they had to call that timeout because the play clock was down to two. On the first play of the drive, that is not as an, an encouraging sign at all. So first and ten now from the 38-yard line. And Hewley banging forward for a nice gain, probably five yards on first down. Hewley, their rushing leader last year, 700 yards, averaged nearly six yards per carry. Ron Jackson, the starter this year, with games of 171 against Southwest Missouri, 149 against Oklahoma State, but... With all that work, too banged up to start, or at this point, even play today. Henry, the nose guard, influenced by that odd counting sequence by Rubley, but he's going to say, nope, he drew the offside. Well, that's what he's going to do. Right away, you your nose tackling you get drawn off sides first thing you do is start pointing at the offense saying it's either snap count or someone moved nice try by Patrick but uh, unfortunately no dice well everyone always wonders how you can jump off sides if you're a nose tackle because you got the ball right in front of you and that was a good move there by McGuire to snap the ball once he saw that Henry was offsides in the neutral zone. LSU had the same chance and they didn't snap it last week. This officiating crew, by the way, a split crew from the Southwest and the Midwestern Independent Officials Association. Newly met immediately by Otis Neely from outside linebacker. Talk about fighting off a block. Neely, the junior from Lamarck. Two-time All-Stater there. Well, he has outside containment, turn to play in, hits it, fights inside, bam. That's perfect. Wrap those arms around. You can see Neely, he gets up excited. We showed you Taylor, the referee, and here's the rest of his crew. That one a loss back to the 47, second and 12. On. Chris Hewley tried to pick up to Coriot and Coriot just blew right through him. What a force back there at linebacker. Watch you'll see number nine at 44. Boom. You see the little pick up there? That's 21 coming in. That was Hewley trying to pick up Coriot. There's 21. Now watch him try to pick up Coriot. No stopping that big man. That's 243 pounds worth from the blind side. Now that's another loss. They need 16 on third down. They're coming again. Quick dump. Fair hands on to this one. And he is at the 31 of AM. That'll silence some booze. 26 yards from Rublin. 
Now, the one thing Dave Rader told us about Rubley is that he picks up the blitz very well. This is an all-out blitz. You're going to see a lot of white shirts coming in there. It's an underneath slant pattern. And this time, Fair catches the ball, goes upfield, picks up huge yardage. Gives them their best drive so far in this game. Everybody wants speed, but speed is worthless if you can't get the ball to your speed. That time, you showed the value. Huey had a bigger hole, and he cut right. Instead, he went left, and he still picked up maybe six before Coriot brought him down. So the Hurricanes starting to get a little something going, but they need seven out of this drive. They trail 21 to three. Very early second quarter, 11-23 and counting. And the Aggies will use their second timeout. Might have been because of the formation. Rubley had three wideouts wide left, and Slocum might not have had the defense on for that particular set. So a timeout was 11-11 in the second quarter. We return after this from Southwest Airlines. Well, it's breezy. It's cool, but it's not that cold. The 11-11 second quarter, 21-3. Why did Slocum burn that second timeout? That's a good question. I think that what happened was I think he had wrong personnel in there. He made a couple changes and brought in an extra defensive back. Hurricane with that same set. Rubel with only the one completion, and that was the fair a moment ago. And after all that, they stay on the ground, and Hewley was inside the 25. And that'll bring up a big third and three play. Jason Atkinson, inside linebacker on the tackle. If you want to stay in this game and you're a, a Tulsa Hurricane, you've got to think seven points in this situation. There's no way you can settle for three. They are two for five on third downs. This is where they really miss Bitson, a guy who not only had 4-4, four, 4-5 four, four, speed, but could get open and was strong enough once he got to the goal line to power his way in. We have yet to see the former All-American today. Chris Penn has this one, and he's got the first down. Junior college transfer out of Lenapah, Oklahoma, tackled by Chris Cruz. Well, one, of the thing that Tulsa, one of the things that Tulsa has done effectively is shorten that passing game up. You know, both long passes that they completed were those little short crossing routes. Rubley has him on a nice extended drive to the Aggie 18. Hewlett inside the 10. The Aggie secondary called on for most of the tackles on this drive. This time it's Patrick Bates, the free safety. When Hewley made a nice dip in, which drew the inside linebackers up into the line, and then when he gets on the outside, the only one that is out there is Bates trailing him. It's that little dip, and then back to the outside. Outstanding first half for Hewley so far. Junior from Mount Vernon, New York. 6'2", 197. He got nine, so it's second and less than one. the five spins away from Bates touchdown Tulsa did they ever need that Oh, they certainly did. They had to be thinking seven points in that situation. I think if they had gotten in fourth down, I think they would have gone for a touchdown. Eric Lang on for the extra point. He is seven for eight this year. Out of the hold of Brian Thompson. He's eight out of nine. Two big things. His line, Hubley's line, opened up a nice hole, and then watch the cut that Hubley makes. Big man on big man blocking right there. Double inside. Now watch the cut right there. 
That's the point where he cuts back and then rolls back inside. But a nice run. A lot different style than a Greg Hill. Boy, here comes a sweet move. Bates thinks he has him. Whoop, nothing but air. Spin back inside. Something to cheer about and the Tulsa fans making the most of their opportunity. You don't think that'll pump up a defense after you've scored? You've had 21 points scored against you. You're starting to deflate. All of a sudden, your offense comes up with a real great drive, gets that seven points, and now you're pumped up again. You want to get the ball back for your offense. Lang will launch this one with the win. Rodney Thomas and Wilbur Biggins, the true freshman, back deep. And again, Lang can't take full advantage. This is Thomas from the six. North South return. He is popped at the 20 by James Blake. He's their starting safety, but he's also their best special teams hitter. And here's one of his best this year. Well, you could hear the sound up here in the booth when he stuck him. You see him 22. Boom. There won't be many people popping Rodney Thomas back the way Blake just did. Now, this is a huge series for the Tulsa defense. They want to sustain the momentum. Better yet, get a turnover. Randy Simmons remains in a tailback. Nice second effort, and he's up to the 27-yard line. So Simmons for the second consecutive series, and Greg Hill getting a long breather. Jeff Cross, the defensive end with the tackle. Notre Dame stung last week and on top early against Michigan State. Speaking of stung, nobody in the nation has been stung more surprisingly than Michigan State was by Central Michigan a week ago. And don't think that R.C. Slocum didn't use that in his pregame talk. So said, anything can happen, boys. We have to be prepared and prepare ourselves well for this game. Rodney Thomas, the lone setback. Nothing. Chris Bratcher, the nose guard. And Brian Smith, the backup at middle linebacker, combining for that stop. L.C. Slocum said, we're not where we will be or need to be. Now, any coach is going to try and downplay the type of opener that they had. But I think he, he really worked overtime on just that point this week. Because freshmen don't necessarily know. They may think it's going to be that easy every week. Aggies might not have gotten the snap off in time. But what would have been third and two may now be third and seven. Boy, does that change the play? When you're in third and two, you've got the run or pass option, and you can't really guess on defense which it's going to be. With third and seven, it's for sure a pass. And Raider says, in, in watching the Aggies on film, they don't care that you know what they're going to do from the formation. They always run out of the eye. They always pass out of this set, the stiff back set. More flags. And I think the same penalty twice in a row, really the procedure. You think that defensive unit's not excited? Every one of them is waving at the crowd here. Get the crowd involved in this football game. Well, here's the first test. First dose of anything close to adversity for these young Aggies. And it starts right there with Granger. Let's watch his poise on this play. Of course, they are in command, 21 to 10. But Tulsa one big play away from perhaps really narrowing the game. All day for Granger. Sideline open. And Brian Mitchell with the big catch for the Aggies. He was helped by Stephen Ford slipping in the secondary, and that one goes for 27 yards. What's more important is to see the fact that Granger picks up when Ford slips. 
Watch Ford. He's in the right of your screen. He's going to slip and fall down right there. Granger sees that and immediately throws the ball out in the flat. Boy, and that's the story of Tulsa's season. They're just a hair away all year long. You know, passes going off fingertips. We've seen that today. If Ford keeps his feet, maybe he comes up, closes, makes an interception, big hit, makes him drop the ball. Anything could have happened. Shirt freshman from Frederick, Oklahoma. Well, Lax just jumps around. You'll see him just jump right inside. Boom. He came close to getting the handoff. Now that's what they have to do to, to equalize that great offensive line in AM is the stunt. That's a stunt where you go inside the inside gap. And the Aggies are still scratching their heads as to why LSU didn't try that more last week. Well, Tulsa went to school on the film. They're having some success with it. Granger delivers, caught Tony Harrison. And he is going to be very close to the first down. Appeared to pick up what he needed and maybe one more. Interesting that Granger would go against Stephen Ford, who they consider their best corner. Yeah, they've picked almost exclusively on him today. That's a little surprising. Would that have anything to do with the fact that Granger is a lefty and he might prefer one side to the other? Well, that was not bad coverage on that last play. Ford had him covered, but Granger just drilled it in there. Hurricane defense did have him in a hole. Granger with another well-carried-out pick and another completion to Harrison to the 25-yard line. This one goes for 18. If this drive was a test of Granger's cool, he's passing. Well, you already said it was. You said the first time that he's been in a in a situation where he's going to be tested. But boy, he throws a nice ball on the crossing patterns. That's the hardest pass to complete because you have to time the speed of the receiver coming across the middle. Plus, you have to read what the defense is. Now, keep in mind, this is a guy who throws 90-plus for the Aggie baseball team. Into the end zone and two call for Brian Mitchell, who on his last cut had broken open. Well, if, I, if I was R.C. Slocum, I would be telling Granger every day how wonderful football is. <laughs> nice look downfield by Granger. Of course, rolling to your left, it's easier for a left-handed quarterback to throw, and this ball was really right there. That's a very catchable football. Redshirt freshman to redshirt freshman there. They pull Mitchell and Wilbert Biggins, true freshman. Is the inside slot receiver. Top of your screen is Harrison. As they go to Simmons up the middle, and he might get one. Chris Bratcher playing his third position in three years from inside linebacker back to nose guard. It will be third and nine. Last time it was third and long, they went to Harrison for big yard. Keep an eye on him, bottom of your screen. Ranger looks that way. Look at it fumble. Aggies keep it. But so much for the drive. Dennis Hickey came on a safety blitz. Safety blitz from the backside. The quarterback never sees it. See Granger looking only to his right. There's the pressure from the backside. Backside was the bandit Tracy Scroggins who caused the fumble. Michigan State on the board. Looked like Dexter Wesley falling on that fumble for the Aggies. And uh, because they're going into the wind, they would not try what would have been a 55-yard field goal. And Tulsa has no one back deep receiving. That's a deliberate delay of game penalty, I think, to back up five and give David Davis a little more room to work with. And now we'll see Chris Penn drop back for Tulsa. 
See, I wouldn't have taken that penalty. I would have made him kick it from the five yards further because that way he can't drop it in. Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> All right. He must have heard me down there. Do we have speakers down there on this side? <laughs> well, it's, it's a small point, but to kick 37 yards, you just don't have as much area to drop the ball inside the 20. Even so, Penn is deep, and he's at the 10. Anything behind that, he will uh, probably let go. Well, a 17-yarder last time, and this one, with the Aggie bounce, will be close to that, and it'll die at the 14. This one goes 23. 20 of that probably on the bounce. And we'll see the Hurricane offense try to get something going. They trail by 11. Twenty-one to ten here as we get late first half in Tulsa. I don't know that there is a, uh, a more unlucky college program than TCU. Every year they have major injuries which change the entire offense and defense philosophy. And of course this week it's it's Leon Clay who broke his leg and not only is he expected to be out for the year but out for next spring practice. We'll have a a, a very interesting video greeting card for Leon Clay that some of the TCU players put together for him this week at halftime along with the chat with Drew Pearson one of the all-time Tulsa greats first half highlights our classroom champ and uh, our Southwest Airlines trivia contest unfolds today as well first down carry for Hewley as he tries right in doesn't get a whole lot maybe one Jason Atkinson quickly over there from inside linebacker did not get out of bounds clock rolls inside four minutes that is plenty of time if Rubley keeps nipping away as he has. This Tulsa offense, if it resembles anybody according to Raider, is built somewhat like the Kansas City Chiefs, although they're not that big and movement it looked like on both sides of the line. But they go almost exclusively one back. A lot of two tight ends. A lot of the short stuff in terms of the passing game. And this one goes against the Hurricane. Of course, the guy with a pro background because he spent a, a little while under Ray Perkins with the Giants and uh, decided early on that his future was in coaching and not playing. So he went to Alabama with Perkins and since then has climbed the ladder back to his alma mater as the youngest Division I head coach in the country. Fourteen needed on second down. Rubley play action. Looking for fair. Open knocked away. Derek Frazier played that one perfectly. You remember when Texas A&M wasted those two timeouts? That could be monumental right here. It's going to be second down, ten yards, to, excuse me, third down. Long yardage. They want to use the clock. They want to get the football back. But they don't, they're not going to be able to use their timeouts. Not bad on third down for Tulsa. Came in at 44% for the year. Rubley that time throwing away from Kevin Smith as the LSU quarterbacks did for the most part last week. But Frazier is no easy mark. He led the Aggies with 10 deflections last year. That's his third to lead the team this year. Other side and too tall for fair. That time he did try Smith's side. And the third catchable ball off the fingertips of Marlowe Fair. Boy, when Smith recovers on this, you talk about closing speed. He just closes and lets him know that he's back there. Boom, and just drives him down. Here in footsteps. I'll tell you one thing, that's one of the best corners I've seen playing college football. So instead of Tulsa trying to use the rest of the first half clock, the Aggies will get a chance to do that as Biggins goes from the 49. They will get tremendous field position out of this return, and this is why he kept his job. Not many people would have after muffing and fumbling a total of five kicks in one game, but they want Biggins to get a chance to make things happen on a 39-yard kick. He returns it 29. 
One thing that R.C. Slocum said is that he caught the ball better in practice. You see, that's a good, clean catch. But he said, I hated to bring him out last week because, first of all, we had the game in control. But secondly, he is so dangerous on it as a return man. Ball knots knocked him out of bounds. Hill and Gross, the starters, are back in in the eye behind Granger. They arrested for two series behind Thomas and Simmons. Hill back to work. Out of the tackle by Smith. Turns the corner and is inside the 10-yard line with the flag down. Hill at about the 8, but the marker is at the 10. I think that's going to be holding against A&M. Oh, clip. I saw number 99. Chatham saying it was against him. In other words, he was the one that was clipped. Greg Short, center of your screen, 86, right there. On Jodan McAdams. Aggies have already used four tight ends. They saw that position as wide open this year. Schorf is a sophomore and here to the starting job from Dennis Ransom last, last year. And also Steve Sagraves, James McKean, and Jason Matthews at that position. So first down still, but they need 17. And Granger to the sideline. Harrison rapidly becoming his favorite receiver to the 13, where Willie Hill drove him out. Well, Bucky Richardson made the trip. But I don't know why. <laughs> they obviously uh, will have to, to think about something here. When he comes back, as well as Granger's picked up the baton, do you see them splitting time 50-50? I can sure see that easily. With Granger's statistics and the way he's led this team. But I think you have to go back to Bucky Richardson. They planned all through preseason and summer practice to be a Bucky Richardson-led team. And if he has the ability to come back and play, which certainly seems like he will, then you go to Second and three, and it is caught. Harrison hangs on for the touchdown. Well, I saw him bobble the ball, but the official was right in position to make the call. I sure thought he bobbled that ball. He did, but that official was right on the play. The official wasn't more than five yards from him and had perfect position to make the call. The big determination is whether he had control in bounds with that foot down. So 28 to 10. We'll show you three different angles on the touchdown catch by Tony Harrison. Again, no rush. This is just lay it up high and let him run underneath it. Watch Harrison bobble the ball right there. Now, see, he doesn't really have control of it there. I'll tell you, from that angle, it didn't look like a touchdown. Here might be the better angle. All right, there's the bobble. You see, he still doesn't have control. He gets control, but his, he's still airborne. Yeah, he doesn't the, have a foot down. The first foot that comes down is out of bounds. Now there, watch when he gets control. Not yet, not yet. Now he's got control. Well, his right foot may be down, Dave. That's the ruling, and that's the perfect angle right there because the right toe is what that official saw. Well, it took all three angles. <laughs> all that momentum is a thing of the past for Tulsa. We will again see James Glenn handle the kicking. This is Hewlett. Not for long, though, to the 17 is all. Reggie Graham after a return of only 11 yards. Two minutes, 11 seconds in the first half. And just about a minute and a half of clock time ago, Rubley came in and hoped to uh, engineer a drive that would eat the rest of the first half clock and ideally make it 21-17 at halftime. Instead, he's down 28-10. He's got nothing through the air to speak of. 
And now he's pretty much got to go through the game. first wave and a first down. 32-yard line for Chris Hewley where Quentin Coriot chased him down. Well, if you remember in that last series, the one thing that you didn't want to do if you were a Tulsa Hurricane, and that was to give the ball up to A&M in great field position. They ran no time off the clock and had to give the ball up. A&M had no timeouts to stop the clock, but Tulsa stopped it three times by passing incomplete. Uli had a nice week against Kansas. 19 carries, 78 yards. Already 67 yards in this first half. Eight-man front for A&M. Almost intercepted. Chris Crooms had his hands on that one intended for Chris Penn. And it would have been 35 10 well, they, they've been known as the wrecking crew. Now they call themselves Desert Storm 2, the defensive backs of A&M. And that was the air attack. He's known for blocking passing. Texas Tech and Wyoming underway. What might have been the best receiving crew in the conference, Rodney Blackshear and Lloyd Hill for uh, the Red Raiders, both not expected to play today. They didn't play last week. They could have used it. There's it out intended for Penn, and luckily, Rubley got it even past Eric Frazier. There is more on that Lloyd Hill story. He is the Rubley former has. Parade High School All-American out of Odessa Permian, and the knee just won't heal. And Spike Dyke says it's a hard thing to figure, but if he misses one more game, he says they'll probably redshirt him. Last year, they thought about redshirting him. He had an Achilles problem that they kept thinking would heal. And they ended up wasting basically the entire year. And he says, we won't do that this year. We'll make a quick decision. Fuley in motion. Here come the Aggies. Down goes Rubley. Pat Henry straight up from nose guard, the first to greet Rubley. Well, I can tell you this. Those offensive defensive linemen, they just love when you're in that solid pass situation. You just blow off the ball. You don't worry about anything. There's Henry. A little twist in the middle. Henry comes around. You get those big hands on there. Just drag them down. He wants a starting job back. And he might get it. And there is still going to be time on this clock when the Aggies get it back. It stopped with a minute 19. Well, Texas A&M uses that timeout to stop the clock, and they're going to get, again, good field position. Decision here is whether to rush the punter or to drop back for the return. If you're wondering, by the way, last time the Aggies wore those maroon pants was a dark day in A&M history. They went all maroon in their home game against Texas in 1983. And that was a big blowout for the Longhorns, but they, uh, they broke them out for us today. And Wilbur Biggins stands at his 35. Brarat has not had much of a first half. That one very low and out of bounds at the 42, 37 yards, and he had the wind behind him for that one. And Raiders said, boy, that minute 10 looks like an hour 10. It certainly does. Right now, you have to figure how many yards A&M needs to get in field position now they, for a field goal. They do have the wind in their face, so they're going to have to get closer for a field goal try. Have you ever seen a young quarterback, not just a freshman, at any level, a young quarterback with the poise of a Jeff Granger? I think he's just one of those special people that comes along once in a long while. Waits till the last minute to fire that one. And a double coverage incomplete intended for Ryan Matthews. But he stood in until the last possible instant against the blitz of Michael White. Well, you talk about the maturity of a quarterback, Dave. And the first thing I think of is what rattles him when you see a defensive player flash up in his face when he throws two or three passes that are dropped, an interception. Those things rattle young quarterbacks, but Granger, Granger has that great composure, and he just doesn't get rattled on anything. The 
little toss-up here. They normally throw out of split backs. This time they give to Gross, and it crossed up no one. Bratcher, the nose guard with a tackle as we go inside 50 seconds. A&M without a huddle, third and 11. Ranger for Harrison did not bring it in, or did he? Oh, boy. This will cause some booze. This is another one. Did he have control of the ball? When he went down, the ball just flew right out of his hands. Here's the pass. Now, let's watch and see if there's control. There's the control. Yes, he's got control. Yes, he's down. Oh, boy, he really came down hard on his right elbow. They say he kept it long enough. First down, 42. And on the blitz, they got Granger. They got the ball. A&M falls on it. Back at their 45. Dexter Wesley. Very alert, very mentor on the blitz that time. And that might do it for the first half. It looked for a while as if Tulsa might have a chance to narrow this gap to four. Not able to do it, and Slocum and the Aggies again breathing easy at halftime. 28 to 10 over Tulsa here at Skelly Stadium. Time in Tulsa, 28-10, Texas A&M. They have passed all the tests that Tulsa's thrown at him here in the first half. Interesting. I don't think Hill carried the ball in the second quarter. He had 69 yards at the end of the first period and didn't make a rush in the second period. He has at halftime 11 carries for 77 yards and a touchdown. And the Aggies in firm command here. 28-10 Aggies. They will receive to start the third quarter. Also won the opening toss, wanted the ball, couldn't do anything with it. Now they'll pay for that as we'll see the Aggie offense one more time. Randy Simmons this time dropping back deep. Along with Wilbert Biggins awaiting the kick by Eric Lang. And Lang takes full advantage of the win. Simmons, five yards deep. And he'll go from the 20. Well, Jeff Granger in that first half, all different types of situations. They had great field position. Sometimes they had to go long uh, extended drives. But the common denominator, as was the case last week, was he got the job done. Well, quite a change on the first three to the last three or four when he didn't have as much success. After that long second quarter breather, Greg Hill back in at tailback and Cliff Gross back in at fullback. And they're not on the same page with Grazer here and Tulsa covers the fumble at the 10-yard line. Chris Bratcher, the nose guard. And that may be Mr. Granger's first mistake. He turned the wrong way on the pitch. Instead of just taking this ball, see, he turns the wrong way in the pitch. Now he tries to make up for it and throws the ball behind. That's going to go as a fumble by Greg Hill, mm. but that's misleading. That was Granger all the way, and Bratcher was there. Boy, had this happened early in the first half, what a different game it might be. As it is, Hewley high steps into the end zone. And we may have a game yet. Boy, that's how you want to do it. One play drives. That'll get you back in any game. Lang for the extra point, 28-17. Well, the, the last thing you want to do to a team that you have in control is allow them to have life. This gives Tulsa huge life. Nice cut by Hewley, picks out the outside, and watch him just high step it into the end zone. It changes the entire complexion. On the sideline, R.C. Slocum is thinking, let's get this ball, let's drive it down, let's just... 
totally take control of this football game. Now, all of a sudden, he's in a dogfight. We've played 10 seconds in the second half, and Chris Hewley has got the Hurricane back within 11 with his second touchdown of the day. They had hoped for a crowd of about 30,000. This stadium seats 40. I don't know if they got 30, but those who are here are making noise. And again, Simmons drops deep with Biggins. It will be Simmons. And he will stagger with a flag down out near the 30-yard line, a 25-yard return for the senior from McKinney. These flags almost always go against the return team, so it's going to put them in poor field position. Watch Eric England here against the Tulsa headhunter, James Blake. Oof. Boy, that's a crunch. <laughs> oh, man. That's, uh, that's the type where, unfortunately, helmet on helmet, you see somebody head and neck injury. That's, that's kind of ugly to watch. Impressive, but ugly. Well, Granger again without the tight field position he had in the first half, and this time they are on the same page. But Hill goes nowhere and might have lost one. Scroggins, the bandit. They'll line him up anywhere. Yeah, he lines up on what the tendency, what they believe the tendency will be. If it's split backs, he can drop into pass. If it's a power set or eye formation where he knows they're going to run, he'll shade to the strong side. Good guess by him that time. We want to bring his great quickness into play. He was a running back in junior college. They bolt him up to 252. He dropped Hill for a loss of two. Granger, too low for Harrison. He had him open for first down yardage. Pressure came from the backup bandit, Cliff Dishman. Really important series here for AM. If they have to punt the ball, if they don't pick up first down, they're going to give the ball back to Tulsa at midfield. You don't want to do that. Mitchell is right, Harrison is left. And Granger with a straight drop, dropped by Greg Hill out of the backfield. You see how a crowd is going to be a factor in this football game. They're not out of it now. Well, barring disaster, they're going to get tremendous field position. Davis has had an awful day. And Chris Penn standing at his 48-yard line. Hurricane playing for the return. This is easily the best kick of the day by Davis. But it's Penn inside the 35-yard line. Reggie Graham with another big special teams hit, but the Hurricane down 11 with all the momentum. And nearly 14 minutes still to go in the third quarter. Tulsa in the first half. The fumble really set the tone for them early. Couldn't get the passing game going. But they've had the uh, time to make the adjustments, and they come out with the passing set. Three wide outs left, and Hewley the lone setback. And Jason Atkinson knifing through for the stop. Atkinson just a ferocious hitter. Got a start in the Texas game last week. Came up with 10 tackles, subbing for Anthony Williams. That was just a preview of what they expect from him all year. I can tell you right now what's going on in a and m huddle. They're saying, listen, we need to take charge of this football game. Need to get our defense out there. Need to make a play, make something happen. Don't give them another score. 
Only one on first down for Hewley. They'll try him again, and the same thing happens this time. It's Mark Wheeler from nose guard. So the Aggies, with the quick penetration, force Hewley into the obvious passing situation, third and eight. And they are three, four, eight, picking up third down. And now, if you're AM, do you rely on those defensive backs to go man on man and try to get pressure on Hugh on uh, Rubley? Or do you drop back in that zone coverage and try to cover the receiver? Only two of ten for Rubley. Bear, who has the biggest catch of the day in motion. Rubley hit as he delivered. And that one intended for a well-covered Brian Thompson. No surprise, Aggies pin their ears back and they force the incompletion. I think Hewley actually backed into Rubley that time. But a good stand by the A&M defense. That's what you have to do. You have to take the, the momentum away from Tulsa in this situation. Eric Lang didn't sign until June. They thought they'd have Jay Seal back as their kicker. He decided not to return to school, so they quickly got Lang out of Fullerton Community College in California. This from 50 yards, blocked by Frazier. Derek Frazier with the block for Texas A&M. There's only one way that you block it from the outside, Dave, and that's if the kick takes too long. If your line's not spread enough, there's no way, if they're spread enough, I should say, there's no way you're going to come from the outside. Now look how far back the kicker is. Takes actually three steps. You see him come in there? That kick just took too long. Well, I think there's one more factor into play here. Nobody blocked Derek Frazier. Nobody touched him. He almost blocks this waist high. Here it is again. You see how long it takes? And he comes all the way from the outside. Well, a flag against A&M. And they might put it on Frazier. He might have been offside. That might be why he got to that ball so quickly. Time out here in Tulsa. Well, the penalty was against Eric Frazier, but not for offsides. The block stands. It was for personal foul after the block. A&M from their 30. Ranger audibleizing. And a rare option keeper for Jeff Granger. I get him four yards or so. Big hit by Barry Minter. I don't know that they want to expose Granger on too many options. They say he can run it. He did it some in high school, but obviously that's not where he's going to do most of his uh, damage as a college quarterback. Uh, actually, he's quite a different specimen from a Bucky Richardson who looks more like a fullback at 6'2", 225. Granger is, is more of a just a thin type drop back passer. Quarterback clip. <laughs> Granger over there saying, I didn't hurt him. <laughs> <laughs> Wipe out the 17 yard pickup. You'll see just a flash for the clip here. Right there against Barry Minter. I don't know how he, I don't know how he got around him. Amazing, he was able to still pick up yardage on that play. Yeah, Biggins had to really take a yeah. wider sweep than he wanted to. So it's second and 21 for AM. Well played to Hill. Throws with a big block on Minter, and he fights it off and still makes the stop at the 25. Let's pause briefly for station identification. This is the Raycom Network. 11 minutes in the third quarter from Skelly Stadium in Tulsa. Dave Barnett and Dave Rowe, 28-17 in favor of the Aggies. They led by 18 at halftime. Fumbled on the first play of the third quarter. 
close as Chris Hewley took it in. And we just saw a black field goal, which could have brought the Hurricane within eight. Granger airs this one out and dropped by a wide open Brian Mitchell. He'll have a long talk with himself now. That is a ball that you have got to catch. You can see the disgust on Mitchell's face as he walks over there. He knows he should have had it. He was wide open. What a great job Granger did to get around the containment and get, get the additional time he needed to find his receiver downfield. Well, on fourth and 29, you saw the numbers for Davis and Penn should again give the Hurricane tremendous field position. Neutral bounce. Hurricane will have it at their 47. Only 27 yards on that kick. And we return after this from Southwest Airlines. Well, Tulsa with another great opportunity, a golden opportunity. You're tempted to call it with 10:26 in the third quarter. Next week, will be at Ownby Stadium in Dallas, the Baylor Bears and the SMU Mustang. That's the best pass defense team in the nation. Not the Bears, the Mustang. And that is where we're headed next week. Chris Crooms had an extended discussion with referee Tommy Taylor right before huddling up for the Aggies. This has been the Kane's favorite third quarter formation. Three wideouts left and give it to Hewlett. He's got maybe a Tulsa touchdown. We've got a game. is going to take time here and discuss whether they should go for two. Is there any question? <laughs> I think I'd go for two. What a cut by Hewley. Tremendous cut. They've run this weak side play several times where Hewley starts strong side and then makes the cut back against the line of scrimmage, and he's wide open. Now, once he gets in the field here, he's out running some awfully fast people. 53 yards he goes. That's a great coaching adjustment there. They spread the Aggie defense. They have receivers left. They block right, and that left a gaping hole. That was about a 10-yard wide hole that Hewley sprinted through. still to go third quarter. Just moments ago, it seems like it was an 18-point game. The Tulsa scoring drives this half have averaged <laughs> six and a half seconds. And one play? <laughs> one play. He's finished both off with touchdowns. I think they are going to go for two. I don't know why that would even be yeah. worth discussing. R.C. Slocum's been in some games like this, and of his seven losses as a head coach, five have been by six or fewer points. Rubly bad pass. Had a man open, it was Dan Bitson. This is the man who has made one of the most incredible comebacks any athlete, any person has ever made. And he made the cut and Rubly overthrew him. This is a guy who in December of 89 was named second team All-American. Caught more than 70 passes, 1,400 yards, and was hit by an unlicensed driver at an estimated 70 miles an hour head on. The other driver had an epileptic seizure at the wheel. Bitson was not wearing a seatbelt. And maybe the ultimate moral is wear your seatbelt. He had eight potential life-threatening and certainly career-threatening injuries. Compound fracture of his wrist. Three ligaments torn in one knee. Broken patella in the other. Multiple fractures in his thighs. 
12 hours of surgery and then months and months of rehab, and that's where he stands, the all-time Tulsa receiving leadership list. They wondered whether he lived. Not only is he living, he's playing. I mean, he's not what he was, but he's a miracle to be in uniform. Randy Simmons, only to the 11th. Billy Cole got him for Tulsa. Dave, I almost get the feeling like, like the, the a and has slowed down. They, they were in control of this football game. It's kind of like a race car. You've been out racing all the while, and you got a big lead. So do you ease off, or do you continue? A&M has eased off, and now they need to get cranked back up again. And that's hard to do. This has been two different games. Tone of the first half set by Tulsa's early turnover. Tone of the second half set by the Hill fumble on the bad pitch by Granger. When in doubt, go to GHT. Tracy Scroggins. Held him to two or three. At the conclusion of today's game, Dave and I will announce the Southwest Airlines player of the game. Greg Hill is the ball carrier, number 47. And the injured Aggie is John Ellisor, the right guard, junior out of Kingwood. One of only two returning offensive starters. Really only one, considering Richardson's injury in Mississippi State, even with Tennessee. Well, that's a big score. You know, Mississippi State had only allowed, that had not allowed a touchdown before this game, in three games. Well, Ellisor at the 15-yard line getting a long look. 6'3", 275-pounder. He was battling an injured ankle coming into the season anyway, and uh, no telling what this is. We won't speculate, but he'll be replaced by a senior, Greg Lakin, at right guard. Lakin himself coming back from sur uh, shoulder surgery in the offseason. Boy, if you're R R.C. Slocum and his staff, what you're saying right now is, please, just get a first down. Get us out of this field position. Still got three, second and seven. Ranger with the audible. Quick toss for Harrison, deflected at the line. It'll be third down. Keo Coleman with a Bulldog interception return. That tie didn't last long. It's 24-17 Mississippi State. Ellisor back in. He only rested one play. Hurricane showing blitz. No pressure on Granger. Picked off. Minder. from Mount Pleasant, Texas. Wanted to put on a show for the homeboys and he picks off Jeff Granger. Left guard Tyler Harrison prevented a touchdown return. And Tulsa goes for the lead. Rubley to Hewley. Inside the five. Boriot with the hit. As we again look at the interception by Minter. Well, sometimes you can't throw over these six foot three inch linebackers, and that's what Granger tries to do. Minter just brings that thing down. He almost scores on this play. It was Tony Harrison, the intended receiver, Tyler Harrison. If the Aggie defense holds here, may have saved the day. 8.55 in the third, 28-23 Aggies, second and goal. New quarterback, Matheson, end zone, Casey, former basketball.
basketball player here at Tulsa, 6 eight. That's the target every quarterback wants in the end zone. Dave Raider said yesterday he has no speed. He's not a quick man off the line, but at six foot eight, basketball player type person, he can go way up for the football. Going for two again, Rubley back in the quarterback. And Whoa! with the dive, did he get it? No. Missed by inches. But Tulsa with a one point lead. They were down by 18 points, less than seven minutes of clock time ago. Well, again, watch the bats, the backside pressure on Rubley. Matheson, they slipped in, and uh, that's an interesting call in itself because Rubley's the throwing yep. quarterback, Matheson is the wishbone quarterback. Yep. Again, you see, watch now, watch Way Casey wave at him. He kind of, well, we can't see it from that picture, but he waved at him. I'm wide open. Throw it in here. His third year of football after two years of basketball, the pros are interested in him, and you just saw why. say yeah we expected this no they didn't <laughs> nobody expected nobody this. expected this 28 10 at halftime 8 44 in the third quarter and it's 29 28 Tulsa big and deep touchback and again the Aggies will start 80 yards away this is just remarkable well, this has been the longest third period that RC Slocum's had in, in a long while and it's not halfway done but Raider said, if we can, first of all, create our own breaks, second of all, see how these young Aggies react to adversity, that's how we have a chance to win this game. And this third scoring drive of the third quarter, only two plays. The first two drives took one play. Aggie turnovers have made them their own worst enemy. And Greg Hill stopped maybe for a half-yard gain by Bratcher, the nose guard. Right now, it's regroup time for AM. They need to get back what they did so well in that first period when they just dominated this football game. 19 points in less than two and a half minutes. And you don't do that without some help. You don't do that against a great AM defense either. They have found an answer for Mr. Hill. We haven't had much GHT time since. Granger with another great fake. And another drop by the Aggies. That was short the tight end who had first down yardage but couldn't gather it in. Granger did his job perfectly. He certainly did. He threw that ball in there. Sharp should have had that catch on the sideline. I think he was too concerned with trying to keep his feet in and took his, his eyes off the ball. After his great start, two touchdowns among his first three completions, he's missed his last six passes. And they've got some drops mixed in there, but he is over his last six. when he starts to pull up here. They turn him back inside, and then there's pressure right up the middle. Now, he gets out of this one, and as you said, he just threw this thing as far as he could just avoid a huge sack. Boy, I'll tell you, again, the punter punting into that wind. Tulsa, they're saying almost midfield to receive this ball. They're going to get great field position another time. Davis with maybe his best effort of the day. Fair caught by Penn, but Tulsa will only be 55 yards away. That one only 33 yards, but it's the best effort by David Davis today into that win. All right, now 
it's really a hurricane warning. It certainly is, and if you're R.C. Slocum, you're saying defense, we need a big play, we need a turnover, we need to stop them here, we need to get better field position. If you're Dave Rader, you're saying offense, just keep it alive, keep it drive, make positive yardage on each play, and pick up first down, first down, and then possibly a score. Last time with this same formation, he really went 63 yards for a touchdown, this time he goes one yard. Buckley and Henry for the Aggies. Those of you with us along the Prime Network and its nationwide family of regional sports cable networks, glad to have you with us for what's turned into an amazing comeback by Tulsa. Down 18 at the half, 19 points in less than two and a half minutes here in the third quarter with still 7.15 to play, and they lead it. 29-28. So watch the big hit on Wade Casey, but he doesn't let go of it. Hi, there's Bates. Bam! And he holds on. First and 10, Aggie, 39. Paying a little closer attention to Hewley. You know, if I was to say to you, my quarterback's just, he's gone 2 of 11 for 32 yards. Would you think he scored 29 points? <laughs> Prior to that pass, that's what Rubley's record was. Two of 11 for 32 yards. That's got to be as well as any team has ever held him in check. But it's just not going to last for 60 minutes. He's too good. by some drops got bailed out on this grab by Penn. Well, one of the things that Dave Rader told us in our pregame talks was we were so close last week. On the fingertips, just another inch here and there, a big catch, and the game would have been different. Today, they're making those catches. They still need five. Third down. Rubley, new play. Play clock at two. As he goes alley-oop, this is Thompson way behind him. And now do you go for it on fourth and five? Why not? The only thing, the only thing that you can think of in this situation for not going is, is to pin AM back inside the 20-yard line again with that wind in their face. They have averaged getting the ball at the Aggie 34-yard line here in the third quarter. Well, rather than go for it, they send Lang in. Now, last time he was going to try a 50-yarder, and Derek Frazier blocked it. Frazier this time lines up on the right side of the defensive line and again gets there, and he might have gotten a hand on it again. I think it takes Lang too long to kick the ball because it's just so hard to come all the way to the outside around there, and I think he got another hand on it. Now, one thing that may help him is that the end has been blocking down so it shortens the distance. I just think he takes too long to kick the ball. Watch this. Around the outside, if the end blocks down, see him stretch out there? I believe he touched the ball. Looking at the trajectory of the ball, it didn't spin like it had been. There you see. Well, you know, even if Frazier doesn't touch it, he still should get credit for it because his presence was felt. Hill juking just to get one. That Aggie offensive line, which was so incredibly good last week, all of a sudden is neutralized here in the third quarter. Todd Hayes made the tackle from strong side linebacker. He wanted, by the way, to give a get well wish to his grandfather, Dennis Hayes, from Del Rio, Texas, where Todd went to high school before Cisco Junior College. And we send that along to Dennis Hayes. Second and nine. Ranger 
with a flag down. And caught at the 42. That's Harrison after two great escapes by Jeff Granger for 22 yards. Now the flag is about almost eight to nine yards off the line of scrimmage. If it's going to be a holding call against A&M, it's going to be a 19-yard penalty. That's what it is. This year, of course, the change is we see the holding call, the change being that the penalty is marked off from the point of infraction. Well, Joe Dan McAdams had two shots at Granger that time as Tennessee comes back with a field goal. Granger got away both times, but now we know why with the help of the hold. This mark-off puts a and back at their 20. Watch Ellisor here working on 68 Phil Holmes as Granger buys time. Ellisor at 51 now. Holmes trying to spin away, couldn't do it right there. Granger quick toss to Hill. One tackle. And it'll be third and a makeable three or four. Hill goes 21 all on his own before Willie Hill brought him down. That may be the biggest play of this third quarter for AM. They needed something to happen positive. And he, as you say, makes it all on his own. It's just a little dump pass underneath. And watch, he bumps into one of his linemen. He just makes this all on his own. That play was big, but this one might be bigger. Third and three. Looks like an audible at the line. I tell you, for a crowd that is well below capacity, they're affecting this game. Yeah, there was a poor communication between Granger and his wideouts. He was trying to call an audible, but just didn't have the time to do it. So three minutes, 34 seconds in the third period. Bob Toledo, the Aggie offensive coordinator. Flipping through the metal playlist before uh, making his decision with Granger. Well, if you, if you can put pressure on, uh, on a young player as talented even as Jeff Granger is, then you get a chance to really see what he's got. Well, it's a great learning experience for Granger. He's going to be in these situations. Every game is not going to be as easy as last week and, of course, the first part of this game. He may be proving that he's human and just like everybody else that plays this game. Only one of eight this half. Now that will compare to 9 of 13 for 185 yards and three touchdowns in the first half. Two tight ends, Matthews and Short. Bill again gets an extra step. And uses it to dive for the first down at the 45. That's about as deep as you're ever going to see a tailback line up. Well, what you, why you give the ball that deep is so that he has vision, and he made Michael White miss him. Michael White jumped in there, and he slashed inside of him and picked up that first down yardage. Greg Hill today, nearing 100 again. In the national run, rushing rankings, the only guy trailed is that, that backup for San Diego State, who's a backup again after nearly 400 yards. <laughs> I know. Last week. Nice job, but sorry, you're not starting this week. And then you had Hill at 2-12. Good cut back into the middle. Paul Knotts, the backup strong safety, wrestling Hill along with Hayes and the clock under three minutes in the third. That puts him over 100, 18 carries for 104. And now A&M is starting to run that offensive line like they should. Now watch him take White out of the play. Good block there by the tight end to take him out of the play. And again, Hill busting up in there. They run so well behind Alex and Ellisor. Rodney Thomas into the game. He's the setback and they split Hill along with Harrison wide right. Well, Thomas just a bulldozer. 
That's a strong 195 pounder. And again, right behind Keith Allis and John Allistor, that combination seems to really be working for A&M. Well, two sophomores on the left side, sophomore center, junior, senior, right side. Is it any wonder that's where they run behind? This guy lost in the shuffle after a mere seven yards per carry in his collegiate debut last week. He'll out. Extra tight end, Matthews in. And I get the feeling that A&M has regained that composure that they, they had in the first part of this football game. There's Thomas out of the shoulder tackle, but ran out of room at the 35. Hayes was there again. This is right what the Aggies wanted. Yeah. Nice extended drive, catch their breath physically and mentally. Trailing 29-28. Listen, Thomas, he makes the decision to go outside. Once he gets control of the ball, he makes the decision to go outside. And as you said, the sideline's the only thing that stopped him. If he could have gathered himself right there, he may have picked up six or seven more yards. Interception brings him down, but not after another first down pickup. Well, if my memory serves me right, I think that's four or five times straight they've run to the right side behind Alex and Alistair. So a breather for Rodney Thomas, and he'll back in. A lot of Tulsa recruits on this team from the Dallas area who played against Greg Hill in high school. They really wanted a shot at him. Before our television cameras. Michael White among them, but he's been held in check. Granger on the quickie to Harrison. Away from Willie Hill and in for the Aggie touchdown. Harrison caught that ball. The cornerback looked like he had his feet in cement. Just looked like he was planted in there. That's his second touchdown of the day. So the Aggies now up five, and no question that they will go for two with Thomas and Hill, both in the backfield. And Mitchell wide right with two tight ends. Granger comes here, he's looking this side. Now watch when he squares back, bam! There's Minner on that weak side blitz, untouched. Now watch the way Harrison makes the cornerback freeze his feet. When he catches the ball right here, the cornerback doesn't know if he's going in or out. See, and he just kind of just turns his ankles, his feet are just locked in there. Well, number one is Willie Hill, yep. who's the backup for Ford. Ford, their best cover guy, not in. Harrison burns the backup, and the Aggies go back up but by only five, thanks to Minner's tackle. But what a great gathering of their composure on that drive. They went to what they did best, that off-tackle play behind, we talked about uh, Alex and Ellisor. They drove the ball down, used some time, and as you said, took a nice breath of fresh air to get back in this football game. Well, the Aggie kickoff man continues to be James Glenn rather than Venetuli. He's a little bit stronger than Glenn. Glenn, Huey and Dunstan Anderson, 133 in the third quarter, and it is Anderson from the 13, got the handle barely, and a return of about 12, Hurricane now down 34-29 after the Aggies scoring drive of eight plays in three minutes and 40 seconds, but the two key plays were short passes where first hill for the for the uh, the the starter of the drive the uh, swing pass that took him from like second and 19 to third and three that was the first key play he did it on his own and the touchdown harrison he pretty much did it on his own there just athletic ability as much as anything else by hill and harrison to get the aggies the lead again you 
field. He met head on Mark Wheeler. Both he and Pat Henry very effective in those yards. There's Bob Davey. He is the defensive coach. And I know he's had some real concern to get that field position all against them the entire third quarter. There's the call. Are there any teams that don't signal in from the sidelines? No, anymore? very few teams don't signal in. The reason being is that you have coaches up in the box and they are looking for tendencies on the offense, so you signal in the defenses. Play clock was at three when Tulsa called time. And that leaves them with only one more timeout. They used the first one before deciding for the two-point conversion. And they use this one just to avoid a second and 13. As it is, they discuss second and 846 seconds in the third. When Dave Rader has to be excited about this football game, I don't think at the end of that first quarter he expected to be in this football game. He said, if we can hang around, we'll have a chance to win it. We'll be all right. And they have hung around. seconds 34 29 a m their 18 point lead vanished in a matter of two and a half minutes from skelly stadium in tulsa dave barnett and dave rowe elsewhere on the southwest conference schedule we've got tech and wyoming already underway tech pretty good against non-southwest conference schools the last five years the nation's top two passing offenses houston and illinois john jenkins says i've got something new to unveil although it won't be the power i won't be the wishbone won't be that outlandish but it'll be new arkansas at home again texas and auburn tonight Ubrey quickly drops it off to ken chris penn in Aggie territory and a flag down. 25 yard pickup if it stands. Frazier on the tackle. You would almost have thought that Rubley was in defensive huddle because he knew blitz right away. It was the perfect call. And he dumped it to the back on that swing underneath. He picks up those big blockers. But it's coming call. back. Sure is. Well, our producer David Handler, director Johnny Tyus must have been in the huddle as well. Well, let's see if, in fact, we can see that clip. Here's the play underneath. Swing pass. Now you get behind those big blockers. Now you start picking them up downfield. There's the push. Frazier, the guy that got yes. close and he makes the tackle. You see the push right in the middle of the back. Let's take another look at it. Watch the push in the middle of the back here. And that's Marlowe Fair, who is not having a day. He, he had the two big drops in the first half, and he wipes out the big gainer to pin here. Aggies have shut out Brian Thompson, the second leading receiver for this Tulsa offense. It's been Penn and Wake Casey here in the second half, and Hewley spins for maybe one. Marcus Buckley hit him on probably the final play of the third quarter. But the Hurricane doing what they had to do. Quick hitters taking advantage of breaks back in the game. And after briefly leading by one, they trail by five as we head to the fourth quarter here in Tulsa. As we start the fourth quarter, AM, which once led by 18, leads by five. Dave Barnett, Dave Rowe, Skelly Stadium in Tulsa. And our first uh, real feeling of football weather today. We've had a great one. Very cool, breezy. Mark Matheson, the wishbone quarterback in. And Fair, out of one tackle, but still probably losing two as Crooms and Buckley close on him near the sideline. Through three periods, here's how the numbers look. And remember how one-sided it was at halftime. Tulsa with virtually all those passing yards coming in the third quarter. 
And they've come within 99 in total yards. But the big number is turnovers. The Aggie turnovers, the fumbled pitch from Granger to Hill, and the interception by Mender, what got the Golden Hurricane in this game. Early lead for Illinois on the Cougars. As on fourth and one. This goes off the side of Farrakh's foot. This is going to be negative yardage. The official over there scrambling to get out of the way of that howitzer, and it goes for zero. I don't think he punted to the line of scrimmage. Oh. Well, I thought the referee was trying to find the ball, looking up for it, and fell down. Yeah, watch this. <laughs> Maybe we see it in the left part of your screen here. There's the punt. Now watch the official on the screen here. Incoming. <laughs> there he is. Over to the left. Watch out. Look, it's way up there. <laughs> <laughs> Well, the Aggies with their best field position of the half. And they go right up the middle to Greg Hill. Well, both kicking games leaving something to be desired today. Boy, that is, that is almost as bad as a turnover. I mean, you might as well go for it on fourth down as the punt to the line of scrimmage. That is a huge error. You know, for Rock was one of their best weapons last week. Carried for 24 and a fake. And uh, this week, back down to earth. We need eight on second down. And flags. I think it might have been Ellisor, the right guard moving. So second and 13, and that changes your complexion. Boy, nothing will make a coach's stomach grind more than when you make a mental mistake like that. R.C. Slocum does not like mental mistakes. Well, he's got the best start ever by an Aggie coach, 18-7-1. He his former colleague, Terry Holman, last week. Locked up here in a great one. 34-29 and in. 13 and a half minutes to play. Again, nothing fancy. Hill will set up third and ten. Tackled by Barry Mitter. And at Knoxville, the Jackie Sherrill era sees its first defeat. Tennessee after trailing 24-17. But they get the last nine points of the game and Johnny Majors with a win over his former assistant, Jackie Sherrill. No fullback, they pull Gross, they go wide right with three receivers and the lone setback hit. Granger behind Biggins and picked off again. James Blake with another Tulsa takeaway. One thing they teach in practice is once that ball is up in the air, everybody react to it. And that's what happens on this play. The ball is tipped in the air. And there's usually a call like fire, and everybody turns and looks for the ball and reacts to the ball. On this play, it pays off for Tulsa. There's the tip, fire, and you can see everybody reacting back to the football. And again, just not a well-thrown pass. Too hard, too far behind Wilbur Biggins. All three A&M turnovers here in the second half, and they've given Tulsa new life. We return after this from Southwest Airlines. 34-29, A&M, 12.43 to play. Hurricane will go from their 33 after the Blake interception. This will make you seasick watching all these <laughs> momentum shifts. It really does. Van Hatfield and Clemson staying perfect. Rubley gives to Hewley, and again, he's got wide open spaces. Ridden down at the 35 by Patrick Bates. I'll tell you what made this play go is that Kroom 
just did a sellout inside and didn't turn it back inside. He just did a sellout. He went into the block, and Hewley just stepped out around the outside of him. You may see Crooms, number six. He's just going to sell right there. You see, there he is in the picture. Now watch, once Hewley is outside, he's on a 31-yard run. No containment. Well, Hill's had a nice day. Hewley's had a tremendous day. 168 yards. Ron Jackson, the usual starter, in and fumbles with Flagstown. The Aggies have it if the play stands. Boy, they rest Hewley after his 31-yard game. They get Jackson in. They might have coughed up the ball. Turnovers are going to be a nightmare for Dave Rader. No indication on the penalty, but definitely an Aggie recovery. Or to have a run to set it up, you're in four down position where you're going to be able to run four downs to possibly pick up a first, and he just loses control of the ball. There's the ball bouncing out. You can see AM very alertly jumping on top of it, but what a huge turnover. That's Derek Frazier who blocked the field goal, influenced if not blocked the second field goal. We think he blocked both of them and gets a fumble recovery here. And another momentum change. RC said that he calls those take it to the house plays. That's when you do something really great. You can take it to the house. What must Dave Raiders' insides feel like right now? Up and down. They thought they had a chance to go back up. Now they're back on the defensive. And Greg Hill, who has averaged on his last 11 carries less than four yards, again kept in check here. Hickey, the free safety on the stop. What are they doing differently? Well, a lot of things are going differently for AM. They're trying to get back into that offensive philosophy where you just power off the ball. Tulsa still making those quick stunts in the line. They're still getting good penetration. But right now, what I'd do is I'd go back to GHT. Just let him carry the football. They heard you. But he does not have a first down. It'll be third and about one. This is where you start thinking about going to gross on this short yardage. Well, he carried 30 times last week, but usually he wasn't hit until he was 5, 10 yards into the LSU defense. He's, he's well on his way to a 30-carry game today. Never shows any signs of wear and tear, though. Two tight ends, short the man in motion. Fumble, Granger. Barely hanging on at the 34, but end of possession. Hill covered it. Tulsa twice had a shot at that ball. Well, that was an alert play by Greg Hill. He was the pitch man on that play. And you can see Bob Toledo just take off that headset. Now, see, he's the pitch man. Good reaction back to get a coverage on the football. Heads up play. Near miss by Todd Hayes. Close, but not quite for the recovery. And it is 20. Davis with the wind almost blocked. And a nice special team shot by Crew. Easily the best punt of the day for Davis. 44 yards, 10 upset after only a 7-yard return. 10 minutes, 8 seconds to play. And you get the feeling the whole rest of the way it's going to be uh, one after another after another for the Texas A&M defense. They're going to have onslaught after onslaught from T.J. Rubley and company. A lot of time left. Ron Jackson fumbled on his only carry of the day. He's out. Hewley back in. Rubley. Going for 10, knocked away by Chris Crooms. The Aggie secondary today has held Rubley, keep in mind, the all-time Tulsa career passing leader, holder of seven career school records, to five of 16, 72 yards. They play the best man-on-man -man coverage, just like Crooms did on that play. 
that I've seen in, in a long time. Still 7 0 in Illinois, surprisingly low scoring first quarter between the top two passing teams in the nation. Second and 10. And Hewley met immediately by Steve Soleri. Marcus Buckley's back up at outside linebacker, the Purdue transfer. Here's a surprise. Florida with three teams among the top five. The last time a state had three teams ranked that highly, it was the state of Texas early in 1977. 14 years ago. This year, Florida State, Miami, and Florida are all up there. Rubley for Thompson, picked off, there it is, Kevin Smith, and the pitch back to Patrick Bates. Thompson will drag him down, but there you have it. We've got a new Southwest Conference career interception leader, and his name is Kevin Smith. What do you say? Sometimes I make him think that they're open to entice a quarterback to try and throw in my area. He did it that time, too. Let's look at it. This breaks the tie with SMU's Russell Carter and TCU's Ronald Fraley. Sometimes I entice them. There it is. I enticed them. Boom. Now watch a little lateral here. This is a nice play. Give it to Crooms. Yeah, that's slick. To Bates, excuse me. Well, very badly underthrown by Rubley. Second straight Tulsa turnover. Battling for two, maybe three tough yards, Rodney Thomas. Turnabout fair play. Last week, Bates got the interception. He ran lateral to Smith. Nice of Smith to be so fair-minded about that. <laughs> fair play. Well, now it's grinded out time. you got almost nine minutes left. What you want to do in this situation if you're Texas A&M is grind it down, use a lot of clock, get those first downs, don't make a mistake. Like that. Whole different story this half for Jeff Granger after a near perfect first half. We pause briefly for station identification. This is the Raycom Network. Eight forty-two to go in Tulsa. Dave Barnett and Dave Rowe, thirty-four twenty-nine A&M. They led twenty-eight ten at the half. That all turned around in the span of 2.26 of the third quarter when the Hurricanes put together 19 unanswered points to take a one-point lead. Maggie's back up and driving after the Kevin Smith record-setting interception. Ranger again, a great fake for Tony Harrison. In and out. It'll be third and 14. He has been victimized by too many drops in the second half. That's a perfect pass on a crossing pattern. Harrison's wide open on the play. A Roman Anderson field goal, and the Cougars on the board. If you're wondering, by the way, R.C. Slocum, no doubt aware of this, Smith needs 10 more interceptions, and it's possible for him. Not for most people, but for him. To tie the all-time NCAA career record, that's 29. Short pass, almost a one-handed grab by the tight end short, but again, Granger not nearly on target that time, being pressured by Tracy Scroggins. And the Kane defense holds. Well, as we said, it's going to be one wave after another. Tulsa pressuring the young AM defense with a chance every time they get the ball to go back on top. Then it is 10 after that 44-yarder by Davis last time, his best of the day. For the corner, too much touchback. Eight oh five remaining. And Tulsa will be 80 yards away from a go-ahead score when we come back. 
Aggies still holding on to the five-point lead. They've come up with a couple of takeaways on the last two Tulsa possessions. And they need to hold them here. If they can hold them here without a first down, then they get good field position. But that's going to be tough to do against Mr. Ridley and company. Tulsa individual record for one game, by the way, 312. Mark Bruce against New Mexico State just last year. So he's got a ways to go there. If I'm Dave Rader, I've got to have flashbacks of the last time we were at the 30-yard line when they fumbled the ball. That great field position and fumbled. And I know he's thinking, don't let that happen again to us. Quick. Flashback. If former Aggie Lester Hayes were down there, he'd be lending fair some of his stick up because he needs it. Oh, boy. If you're Dave Rader, you've got to have a knot in your stomach up as big as a basketball. Look where they're going to have the ball. Just a crossing pattern. Perfect pass. He catches it. He's just running downfield. They just strip the ball out, recover it, and they've got the ball back. Back and forth we go. And with 7.05 to play, AM still by five. Brother Kevin Smith, right after his record-setting interception, he pauses the fumble by Marlowe Fair. Watch Kevin Smith's right arm when he carries from behind. He just kind of swapped around right there, left arm, excuse me, and just knocks the ball down from behind. What a huge play. Neely recovered. Aggies breathe a little easier. GHT. He lost it. But did the ground cause the fumble? It did, and it's still Aggie ball. Dave, the official on the side made the call that he was down. His knee was down on the turf. Boy, and Dave Raider's offense was halfway onto the field. They were ready for more. Watch his knee right there. He's down. Now the ball's still there. Now you'll see the ball pop out. I don't think the ground caused it necessarily. Lewis Curtis caused it, but the knee was down. Yeah, he slips when he makes his cut here and goes down. There's his knee down. Right there he was down. And the ball's still in his possession. Good call. Timeout, Granger. Play clock was down to nothing, and I don't know if he got, I guess he did get the timeout just in time. So we'll take it with him with 6.28 remaining as Bob Toledo and Granger discuss the options. It'll be second and eight for the Aggies when we return. Well, that's as, as it is known today, 11th Street here in Tulsa. But in your day, <laughs> Route 66, that's, buddy. That's the Route 66. I used to watch that program when I was a kid. Route 66. Getting some kicks today. With 628 to play. Maggie's on second and eight. Granger play action. In and out of short pants. He had his choice of tight ends, but 
Sheehan was open short. Dork was open a little deeper. That would have been a first down grab. Instead, third and eight. And both quarterbacks victimized by drops oh, all boy. day. They've had drops all day long. If I had been Granger that time, I think I would have thrown to the underneath man. He was so wide open, he had no coverage on him. at the 39. Boy, that was a nice catch. Going out of bounds, diving out for it, had to reach away from his body, and a perfect throw on the out pattern. This is the out pattern. And for a team that lost their top four receivers from last year, they needed to develop a go-to guy, and it looks like they've done that. The sophomore from Houston, Forest Brook, seventh catch today. Hill and Thomas in the all-freshman backfield. Greg Hill for about four. More pressure on the Aggie ground game this half because Granger through the air since halftime is the now with that completion to Harrison. Three of 14 with two interceptions. Well, you remember when R.C. Slocum played last week, Lean On Me? This week he's going to be playing some type of an educational song because this has been a real learning experience for these young Aggies. Hang on, Sloopy, maybe? Hang on, Sloopy, right. Maybe not. Second and six. Head-on crash at the 45-yard line as Phil Holmes was there to bury Hill, and it'll be third and four as Michael White helps out on his 12th tackle. He wanted this game. He's the Dallas Kingston product. Wanted to go head-to-head -head with all his former high school rivals for this Texas A&M team. Boy, well, had 119 tackles last year. They pull Gross, Hill the lone setback, Biggins the extra receiver on the inside. It'll be Hill. Another big play. His biggest play, of course, was the interception in the third quarter. This one's close because with 420 and counting, Tulsa's got to get it back. Down five. David Davis. Improving that average, it's 10 at the 14. And are we going to have roughing? We are. This will be down to the 15, but Tulsa commits the unpardonable sin of roughing David Davis. It was Todd Hayes who ran into it. There is no excuse. No way. You avoid the kicker. If you don't block it, you can see Dave Rader with those hands on the hips. Boy, he's upset. If you don't block it, you avoid him. You step to the side. He just runs in and drops him over, tries to hold him up. Well, they've had turnovers on their last three possessions. And uh, doesn't look like they're going to get this possession. Well, those are plays that will kill you. You're a coach. You can't coach your way out of those type of plays. Those are just mental errors. Not sure what the discussion's about here. The kick came on fourth and five. And uh, we. Well, I only saw one flag on the play, Dave. We will uh, have to decide now if you're Tommy Taylor if it's an automatic first down, and he says no. They would still need a fraction of the yard. Listed as fourth and five, but that could mean, you know, fourth and 5.9. Exactly. And apparently it did. That's exactly what the call was when they went over to the sideline to see if it was fourth down and exactly five or whether it was short of it. The flagpole, the fourth down marker is sitting in what looks to me to be just a touch over five yards for first down. That ball was downed on the 
pulse of 13. And this snap will come from the Aggie 49. They will go for it. I'm not, I'm not believing this. I think he's going to try to draw him off sides. I can't believe this. screen watch him flinch see up oh. boy another another four or five inches you snap that ball you got a first down but interesting the decision to re-kick they had the ball inside the 13 yard line i think dave right at the 13 tulsa sets up the return here and what a shot by david davis at the four yard line Boy, makes it a great coaching decision. 52-yarder. That's that is perfection. And after the way this day began for him, that's got to feel great. Boy, that's when you turn around and you say, "What a great coaching decision." I decided nine yards better. Would have been the 13 instead. It's the four. Tulsa, 96 yards away. They have three minutes and 45 seconds. And one timeout to work with. Trailing by five. Well, Marlowe Fair's not in the game. It's Crowder wide left. And Rubley for Thompson. Great grab at the 17. Well, that was an outstanding grab by Thompson. That's his first of the day. He's their second leading receiver. They'd shut him out until this 12-yarder. It's just a quick in, and look, he's falling down and makes that catch. Not much speed, but enough. 4.740 for Thompson. He and Penn right, Crowder left. You lead a setback. Protection is outstanding. Thompson again. And had he not slipped and allowed Atkinson to hit him, that might have gone for big yardage. Well, you know, there was another player here a few years ago that they said didn't have any speed either, a fellow named Steve Largent. But he went on to NFL stardom, but a nice catch in the seam. Like you said, if he hadn't slipped, he might have picked up another 10, 15 yards. You know, our halftime guest used to have that same uh, <laughs> description of his abilities. And yes. All 70s receiver, Drew Pearson. They, they just produce him here on, a, on an assembly line. Under three minutes. Atkinson looping on the rush. Caught by Penn. Thanks 
Several things happen on this short drop, and he picked him up right away. No pressure. Now watch the run by Penn. He just gets out there, down the sideline. They bumped into each other, and he's down the sideline for a score. The short crossing patterns are what are doing in A&M today. Again, not a long pass, just leads him perfectly. When he catches the ball, he's in between the front line and second line of coverage, and he's off to the races. Bates and Marlon Haynes, the safeties, running into one another. Well, Corey out might have gone the wrong way here. That may have been his drop into that zone. So, if you're Tulsa, you're now saying to yourself, we scored too soon. <laughs> because still 2.47 to play. What a big series for a and That's probably the understatement of the year. There's Corey out. Of course, a disappointment. I think he must have a groin pull, too. I saw I saw the wrap on his groin, so that may be a big factor with his coverage on that last one. High kick is extremely short from the 22. Fumble! Still loose. Holds the ball. Tulsa team, an 18-point underdog. And they found themselves down by 18 at halftime. Four of their five scoring drives today, under one minute. The big plays in the third quarter set the tone. 19 unanswered points in less than two and a half minutes. And Rubley, with 2.03 in counting, has them looking for more. Uly again gets wide. Then Atkinson and Cruz close on him. And it'll be third and one. Since you asked, the last time to pull it back, rush for over 200 yards, it was a guy named Dickerson. I think I remember him. Eric Dickerson. That was the year SMU finished number two in the country. Mark Matheson, the wishbone quarterback who has thrown a touchdown pass today into Rubley. They call it two needed. On third down, here's the wishbone. And the lead by Hewley, first and goal. to a field goal. If they're able to hold them to a field goal, then they can drive back and, and score to win this football game. If they let them go in by a score... Boy, the Tulsa <laughs> assistant coaches just ran past us, <laughs> and they sounded like a group of high school kids. They're excited. I don't, think, I don't think they can stop the clock. They only have one timeout left. 39 seconds, they can't stop the clock. We've got 30 seconds remaining. And one of the bigger upsets you're going to see in college football this year. They're just watching that clock drive down. 14, 13, 12, 11, 
They only have one timeout left. We are told the Aggies have a timeout. That must be an error. 